Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cisco Optics Podcast, where we talk about pluggable optics for networks. The rise of hyperscale data centers has upended computing and network equipment business models over the past several years. The pluggable optics industry is no exception and has definitely been impacted. I'm fortunate enough to have as a guest today someone who has seen that transformation from the inside. This is episode 28, and we conclude our second conversation with Ron Haran. You may remember him from a previous series of this podcast on silicon photonics. In this episode, we talk about future 800 gig and 1.6 terabit optical transceivers. Ron attended the University of Texas at San Antonio for both his bachelor's and master's degrees. His master's thesis topic entitled Synthetic Vision Landing Aid System was patented as the first GPS-based aircraft landing aid. From 1994 to 99, while at Compaq, he earned 15 patent awards. In 2001, he joined Broadcom Corporation, where he managed field applications engineering for the compute segment team, ran program management in the networking BU, and was a senior director of sales and strategic account manager covering the Hewlett Packard Worldwide account. In 2011, Ron moved to Luxterra, where he worked as vice president of sales before moving into the role as vice president of marketing. Luxterra was eventually acquired by Cisco in 2019, where Ron now runs product management for the Cisco Client Optics Group. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts. You would follow us now. We're part of the Cisco Podcast Network. Check out our blog at blogs.cisco.com and search on hashtag Cisco Optics Blog, all one word, no hyphen and no spaces. You'll find podcast notes and links there too. For our YouTube playlist, go to youtube.com and search on Cisco Optics. And for product information, go to cisco.com slash go slash optics. And now, join me as I talk with Ron Ram. As you, you know, even with 800 gig, you end up with OSAP, D, you know, versus QSAP DD. Um, but as far as the speeds are concerned, I think that what you're probably going to see is more, you know, that coming back together. So I think companies realize that for, for many reasons, everything from supply chain to, you know, the fact that, hey, uh, guess what? I'm, I'm asking for a custom part now, you know, versus what mm. everybody else is doing. Uh, you know, there's there's many, many reasons, but I think what's happening is you're going to see a reconsolidation of kind of the optics roadmap. Uh, you're going to see a lot of companies moving to, I, I call it 800 gig, but it's really 800 gig aggregate. So what, it'd be like two by 400 gig, uh, okay. you, know, you know, from going from 200 gig instead of going from 200 gig to 400 gig, they're going from 200 gig to two by 400 gig. And then you, you're, you know, you're seeing companies that were doing 400 gig now go to two by 400 gig. So there seems to be a speed consolidation around the 800 gig aggregate that you're seeing. Um, and then the next, the next speed up from that is going to be 1.6 terabit. And mm -hmm. I think that with the 1.6 terabit, you're probably going to start seeing uh form factor consolidation. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a new uh, MSA that's, you know, it's under development right now called OSP XD that, um, that, you know, even Cisco is, is, you know, co-chairing that MSA. Um, mm. So you're, you're starting to see, I think people realized that it was just unsustainable. You know, it was hard for somebody like Cisco because instead of having one flavor of something, you had to have two of everything. Or, yeah. or four of everything. And so um, I think that everybody's kind of come to the realization that, that this was, too, you know, this was madness and, and, you know, it's kind of starting to, to reconsolidate again. That's one so, of the things I'm seeing. So when the bifurcation started was the thinking that each of these hyperscalers was so large on its own that they could essentially call the shots for, for their, their own market basically right that's so right suppliers would do it because they they themselves as a singular entity were big enough that it was worthwhile but now it looks like people are looking more broadly than that and realizing that industry-wide there are still advantages of having everyone on board on the same standardized form factor that's right that's right i, I think there was some of that well, there's definitely some of that and then there was also just the the obviousness of the next step, right? It, it you know, it well, just 
what makes it so obvious? Like, I, what, like, did anything, like, what turned, what changed people's minds I, in this no, 1.6 I, terabit? I, I really think that, I, I really think it was supply chain. Because, you know, a good example is there's one big web scale that, that basically went out and they did their own thing. They, they defined a, a, they defined an optics that nobody else on the planet, you know, is using. Right. Okay. And, and yeah, they're big, but, but the problem with that is, is, is now you're, you're locked into that supply chain. And, and instead of being able to take advantage of economies of scale and, and, you know, cost, you know, cost vendors that they're buying from to build that optics, writing the cost curve down using economies of scale no longer work as well. And so, um, you know, and then if, if there's a supply chain, you know, if, if there's an issue, um, you know, if there's an issue out there with, with uh, you know, some force majeure event or, or whatever, COVID or, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's, it becomes more difficult for them to recuperate from that because they, so their supply base is so small. <clears throat> so even if, even if the volume is very high, just having another option to go to, another vendor to go to is highly advantageous because like you said, if something happens to that one vendor, you've put all your eggs in that one basket. Yeah. And I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the web scales long ago went to, you know, supply chain risk mitigation, right? They, it's, you know, where they have multiple vendors doing the same standard product, but, but, mm. you know, if, if all of those vendors are pulling from the same, you know, chip supplier, to build that optics and that chip supplier goes down, you know, you've, you've you know, you're still down, right? And that, that you got a lot of em empty modules then. Right. So, so I, I think that, you know, I think that there's just getting back to the kind of the high levelness of this. I think that you're going to see more consolidation in the industry due to things like that. I mean, companies try to do their own thing. They, they mm -hmm. kind of develop proprietary, you know, they specified proprietary optics. Yeah, you know, people went after that. But from their perspective, it, it, it wasn't as optimal as it could be. And like I said before, the number one thing that drives these web scales or their hyperscales or whatever um, is cost. And so, you know, they're, they're looking for every possible way to, to get costs down. And, you know, obviously they have to have a reliable product that, that works. Right. But, right. um, but what drives their decision-making about the direction they go is costs. And so that's, that's really what, what, uh, I think at the end of the day, that's, that's where this ends up. So when do you think we're going to see 1.6 terabit? Well, I think, um, you know, I think that right now, you know, I th I think that 800 gigabit is well two by you know two by 400 gig is probably going to be a 2023 2024 technology type of thing for the web scales. I think that you know I think real realistically to get to 1.6 terabit you need a 200 gig. You need 200 gig electrical, 200 gig optical to be able to do that. So you basically have a, you know, a, a two by 800 gig will be eight channels of 200 gig, you know, electrically and optically. Okay. If that makes sense to you. Um, yeah. And so I think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think between now and then, basically it's a hundred gig per Lambda technology is going to be prevalent over the next probably four, maybe even five years. Um, so all the pro my point is all the products that you're going to see from here to then are going to be based on, you know, like an 800 gig. When you get to 1.6 terabit, now you need 200 gig per Lambda. And, you know, some and, people would argue- per electrical lane. Yeah. And so some people would argue that you can use 16 by 100 gig or, you know, even optically 16 by 100 gig, but we don't necessarily see it that way. We we feel like, um, you know, going wider with with a hundred gig per lambda may not necessarily be the right answer. 
uh, we do support the QSP, OSP XD uh, MSA, but um, but I think where this is probably going to end up is more of a 200 gig per lambda to get to 1.6 terabit, and that's probably in the 2025 2026 timeframe. So maybe maybe sooner. I think you know. I think people always say that they want to do it sooner, and it's usually a year or two later than what. Like if you go out in the industry, and you, you know everybody, you know, made a big deal about 400 gig. 400 gig is going to launch in 2018. You know, now it's going to launch in 2019, and but realistically, you know, 400 gig is still ramping, and and uh, yeah. So there's. There's always a, always a distinction between the actual launch and when it when like meaningful adoption takes place. Yeah, yeah, I think that, and even amongst the hyperscales, you know, there's there's differently timing differences, but you know, people, you just have to be careful in the industry when somebody says, "Well, you're going to see, you know, 1.6 terabit in 2023." That's probably not, you know. That's probably not going to be accurate. You're probably going to end up seeing it in 2025. Mm, you know, just okay. based on historical, what t- you know, what tends to happen. You know, that doesn't mean that I'm I'm right and it won't be 2024. But I'm just saying historically, it's usually there's a lot of hype around stuff, and then all the you know then then reality sets in and it ends up being later than than that. Well, Ron, we can always sit down again in a couple of years. And, yeah. And uh, check, check on that. <laughs> yeah. That was the fourth and final part of my new conversation with Ron Haran. Subscribe to this podcast, and we'd really appreciate you helping to get the word out. Share this with friends and colleagues that come to mind when you think of network technology and optics, and leave a review on Apple Podcast. We're also on all the other major podcast platforms. You may see the Cisco Podcast Network come up when you search for Cisco Optics Podcast. That's where we live. And you can find other great podcasts there too. Also, check out the Cisco Optics blogs at blogs.cisco.com and search on hashtag Cisco Optics blog. No spaces and no hyphens. We also have educational videos on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com and search on Cisco Optics. Thank you for listening. This is Pat Chow, Product Manager at Cisco Optics. Next time, we'll start a new conversation with a new guest. Until next time. 